I've got a LT 2000 Craftsman 42 inch cut with a 20 horsepower single cylinder Briggs and Stratton. It's plenty of power. It's just a 42 inch cut, but they're great machines. I, I've had great luck with them. They're one of the easiest machines to work on. I really like them a lot. Um, they've run the same same axles, same decks, same frames. They, they change the hoods up a little bit and the dashes and the fenders, but the, mechanically, they're almost an identical tractor for probably close to 20 years. Um, and now the John Deere sold by Home Depot, it took them about six or seven years of being out before they started coming out with a lot of problems on them. They have several issues. They're half the price of this equivalent commercial model John Deere. Any of the 100 series John Deere's are not commercial quality. Some of them now do have the greasable decks. That's definitely a positive. I uh, need to grease those pretty regular. I've had them. This, this one had 116 hours on it before I greased it and the deck bearings were definitely in need of being greased but none of them had gone out yet. Um, I've had some of the Cub Cadets, the smaller version than the one I have here, some of the 46 inch that I got with uh, less than 60 hours on them and they had already completely lost the bearings in the deck and I had to replace replace the bearings. Greasing wasn't enough. Um, overall the Cub Cadet decks are not a great design. I have a lot of problems with the upper pulleys spinning the or shearing the gear or the uh, splines off the shaft and as well the blades also spin the star off the bottom of the shaft so your upper pulley and blades are not really connected very well and they tend to spin when you get into tall grass. I've several of them I've taken and weld, tack welded the pulley to the top of the shaft and tack welded the blade to the nut on the bottom and uh, instead of replacing all the parts that's a cheap way of fixing it and it will not go out once you do that then you can when you impact the blade off of the or the nut off the blade it'll break that tack weld but as long as that tack welds there you know your blades won't spin free um, the John Deere's are just like I said they're half the quality of the commercial John Deere's I like them all of them are hard to start unless you choke them even once they're warmed up they tend to need the choke to crank up just for a second as soon as they crank you can turn the choke off that's pretty common I've also had a lot of complaints on people saying the steering's loose. I just wanted to show that every one of them, you can see the wheels won't move at all. The steering's a little bit loose. That's just typical. There's nothing wrong with it. They're not race cars. I don't know what people expect, but all of them have some slop in them. Every one I've got is that way. I don't think that's a issue at all, but they're all good tractors. They've all got a few flaws. Nothing is really better than the other I don't think it just depends on what you like keep them parked in the garage and out of the rain and sun and you'll get a lot of better service out of them um, some of the parts that go out on them is mainly the deck due to grease fittings not being on the pieces there is no way to grease the bearings on these unless you manually pull them apart and pull the bearing out you can pop this little grease seal off and hand pack it full of grease and then slide it back into the housing. Lower and upper bearings are easy to remove. You just have to disassemble the deck. I do not re recommend pulling the assembly off the housing. Leave it on the deck and disassemble your shaft and bearings off the deck. A lot of times the bolts will strip out in the aluminum, so it's better not to take those off. Uh, this is MTD. It is pretty much the same on almost all the MTD mowers with the difference some of them are higher or taller and then these are the Craftsman spindles this is the standard spindle that has been on Craftsman for probably 20 years they've upgraded now to the, a different design that has a better mount it's got four bolts holding it on so the problem with the older ones is they only had three and if you hit anything with them they tend to break crack off uh, near the bolts and it doesn't take much to break one off of a deck. The new ones with four bolts, they hold up a lot better. I actually haven't had one of those broken yet. Um, the only issues I've run into with these new ones is the castings are not very good quality and the 
the bearing has spun in the casting on on several of the spindles that I've worked on. Um, overall, I think they're all about the same as far as the quality goes. Um, the MTD do take a little more abuse. They don't break quite as easy as the Craftsman. There is no grease cirques on them. I don't have one for a John Deere to show you. Some of the newer John Deere 100 series sold by Home Depot do have uh, grease cirques on them. And it takes about anywhere from 20 to 40 pumps of grease to fill them up. Um, and usually they have, you just keep pumping until you see grease come out of somewhere. That way you know grease is in all your bearings. The, this is one problem I've seen with the John Deere's a lot is these levers breaking. They're thin plastic. If they sit out in the sun and you're rough on the levers, they will break. I've replaced several of those. And then this is a problem I just ran into on the John Deere uh, 155C model. The upper bearing in the PTO assembly ran out or just dried up with grease and it seized the bearing. And when it seized, it yanked the housing of the PTO loose from the mounting bracket on the frame of the mower and it yanked the wiring harness out and it sounded terrible when it was happening uh, customer reported and then on the idler and tensioner pulleys on all the decks they they're not greasable they say they're lifetime they wear out usually within a couple hundred hours if not sooner you can take a grease needle purchase from Lowe's or uh, hardware stores. I'll show you a picture of a grease needle. This is a grease needle purchased from Ace Hardware. This one's in kind of rough shape. I've been using it for quite a while. But you can normally penetrate your seal. Some Sometimes it's easier than others. This is just an old an old bearing so I'm not worried about tearing it up it's already in bad shape but just pump a few squirts of grease into it until you see grease coming out and sometime I'll spin it around and try to get a little more grease in it or reposition the needle and a lot of times the bearing will dry it start drying up and it'll sound bad you can pump three squirts of grease into it and it'll go a, a long time once it's been greased